1999 Ford F-250 7.3 with a ZF6 manual transmission. Um, I am not the only one in the world that has this problem, but my parking brake is awful. So I'm going to attempt to mod the parking brake a little bit to get a little bit more friction going on. This parking brake doesn't hold worth anything. I put new shoes in it, new cables, foot pedal, you name it, I've done it. Um, and I'm still not having great success with the holding ability, even on a 2% grade. It's, it's pretty bad. So step one, raise and support your vehicle. Put it on blocks, put it on jack stands. Don't be a fool with working with a jack. Next step, remove your tires. And then you're gonna remove the brake caliper bracket. You can leave the caliper attached and then we'll go from there. Once you have your tire removed, you're gonna to go to the brake caliper bracket and remove the two 18 millimeter bolts located on the back side of the bracket. Get that removed, get your caliper tied up, and then remove your disc, your drum and a hat. Okay, so here is the thought process behind what I'm about to do. Obviously, when you go and buy aftermarket drum and a hats from, let's say, Advance Auto, Auto Parts Store, any choosing, a chain store, the drum, which is where your parking brake rides, is smooth, and according to various resources, and some research, I have found that if you buy these from Ford directly, these drums right here come bead blasted. So they're texturized just a little bit and you break them in during a procedure by the Ford service manual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughen the drum surface up a little bit. I'm not touching the disc rotor at all. I am touching just right here on the drum surface and what I'll be using is a deburr, a rasp, whatever you want, want to call them. I'll attach a picture of the exact one I'm using, but I don't want to take a lot of material off here. I don't want to cause the rotor to become imbalanced by anything. I just want to texturize it because I don't have a bead blaster. I have a sand blaster and I've tried using that and I did not have much luck on the other side. So this is what I will be using and I am just going to roughen the surface up and I will show you after I get a little bit of it done. Okay, here's after about 20 seconds of work. So I'm using my rasp or my deeper tool. I'm not quite sure the exact name for the tool I am using, but I am very gently smooth surface right here. This is untouched. And then right here, all I've done is texturize it just a little bit, no grooves, no slots. You can see how it's just a little bit of texture on there. Just enough, I'm hoping to give these brake pads a little bit more to grip on over the full surface area. Now I'm not going all the way to the front because the pads don't touch there, therefore it's not needed. But this whole process will take me about three minutes and it's not very hard. I'm basically allowing my deeper tool here to bounce just a little bit. I'm not putting any weight on it. I'm just evenly going around. And then if you can hear it here, you hear that noise, which is the roughening up versus smooth see there's no noise when I let it slide just a little bit of material we're talking about less than a millimeter of material here so it's just the point of kind of just roughening up the material to hopefully allow more stopping power for this parking brake okay here's my finished result I've gone around the entire drum on the inside and I have just this very light texture to it now with the idea to increase the stopping power of the parking brake on my manual trans and it is it feels nice it doesn't feel jagged anywhere it just feels like I've just textured it just a little bit to roughen it up so let's get it installed and go from there Before reassembly, I strongly suggest you take out your tensioner, let's see if I can get it here, your tensioner adjustment back there. I suggest you take that out, you clean the threads up, 
and you put some anti-seize on the threads, not a lot because you do not want it heating up and getting onto your parking brake pads. This is stuff I use, just picked it up from Advance. Up. Oh. Yeah, anyway, that's the stuff. I suggest it, take it off, clean the threads, and put just enough on here just to coat the threads. You do not want it gobbed on there. This will help you adjust the parking brake on the next step. To remove the adjustment collar for the parking brake shoes, I first removed this retaining spring located on the bottom side here. It might be difficult to see. I'm on a cell phone. I put it, it goes in right here. You'll see it on your truck. If not, you can find another video on this part. I removed that spring right here. And then I took out one of the parking shoe retaining pins, just like you find on any typical drum brake, which was located right there in that hole. The other side looks like this. This just gives me a little bit of free play so I can pull the spring and stuff out. I removed one side, I just chose the back, doesn't matter which one you really choose. And then I spread the shoes to remove this pin, or this collar, sorry. Now I'm gonna take this adjustment collar, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna put some anti-seize on the threads just so when I go to adjust my parking brake, it makes it just a little easier to adjust. And in the future, it will not be seized in there. These things have a tendency to rust and it almost makes them impossible to adjust. Once you have your adjustment collar for your parking brake shoes, all done with anti-seize, I strongly suggest that it makes it a dream to adjust the shoes because it's not trying to force out of some rust or anything like that. I also apply a very thin line of anti-seize where the drum or the disc and hat, whatever I called it earlier, um, meets the axle stub so that way you don't have to beat it off with a hammer. Hopefully you didn't have to this time, but mine were getting a little stuck. So I went ahead and put some anti-seize on both sides. And now I'm going to install the drum and a hat and then I'm going to adjust the parking brake. Once you have successfully reinstalled all the components, that be the drum and hat assembly, your caliper, bracket, all that, once that's installed, the next step to do is to adjust the parking brake shoes. You do that by accessing this rear hole here. You're gonna take off this little cover. It is right there and per the service manual which I just went and read again what you want to do is you want to tighten that adjustment collar until it starts dragging the drum inside here and then once it is dragging you want to back off the adjustment collar until there is no drag evident so do that and then we'll go from there all right I have the truck back together and I have adjusted the parking shoes and I have noticed a very big improvement on my parking brake holding power. I might go back in a little bit and roughen up just a little bit more, but this is a very, very tiny slope. This is nothing to brag about, but my truck wouldn't even hold this right here. It's in neutral, parking brake set, and I have definitely noticed an improvement on it. So if you guys think this might work for you, by all means, I'm not saying it's gonna fit your truck great, but it did work for me. Um, I'm going to do the pad braking procedure um, after I stop the video here, just as the manual says, and it says to basically go to um, X miles an hour and then apply the parking brake until the truck comes to a stop and only do that one time and one time only. Uh, to seat the pads I will be doing that and then that'll be it I hope this helps someone if it doesn't I didn't make this video have a good one guys